This video focuses on Shabbat. Okay, so uh, lots of different questions will be asked about this, but essentially describe what they do, uh, explain the importance, and whether it's possible to always uh, observe Shabbat or not. Right, now, uh, when it comes to Shabbat itself, okay, so first of all, it's a big deal, it's gonna last a while, you've gotta make sure you are prepared, okay, that you are prepared. So that is your first point, Jews ensure they're prepared for Shabbat. All right, so um, the reason for this is that uh, in order to avoid doing work uh, on the Sabbath or whatever, that they make sure all the, the chores was got done, so whether it's shopping, cleaning, cooking, whatever, make sure that there's in the food in the house, that they're all prepared to, to do it so they don't have to, so they can just focus on celebrating Shabbat rather than anything else, okay? Um, then the next one, all right, we're talking about the beginning. So we've got the preparation, then we focus on the beginning. Now, Jews mark the beginning of Shabbat, all right, um, at, to remind them and to display its importance, all right? So um, you could say about there's a variety of different things that they would do, all right, but the I would focus on maybe the, the Sabbath candles, okay? So the lighting of the candles that are lit on, it's the sunset of Friday, okay, to mark the beginning of um, what's called of Shabbat. All right, now with that, if you really want to make sure your answer is uh, fantastic, then you can say about the fact that they do this as a reminder of two candles, as a reminder of filling the, fulfilling the sort of the two, uh, two mitzvahs of to remember the Sabbath, but also to observe the Sabbath. All right, if you're able to put those two all right, in, and they're called Zacho and Shamo, all right, I don't know if my pronunciation is perfect there, okay, but Zacho and Shamo, that those two, all right, they're the name of the two mitzvahs they must follow, and the two candles that they light at the beginning of Shabbat on Friday evening represent the importance of observe, remembering uh, the Sabbath and observing the Sabbath, okay? So there's your first one. Prepare, start on Friday evening. Then, we're getting into the details of the Friday evening, so we've started. What are we doing on a Friday evening if we're Jewish? So... They conduct specific sort of practices on the Friday evening to remember the importance of Shabbat. All right, so um, they'll say the Kiddush prayer, okay, which is, which is obviously something that's really important. They eat challah, okay, which is their, their bread. And what that does is it reminds Jews of the Exodus and God's love, all right? The, the bread is sort of like interwoven, if you want, like wrapped around one another. Imagine that's sort of like the idea of God giving you a hug, okay? Keep that sort of idea in mind. Don't phrase it like that on your exam, though, obviously, okay? So, that's what they do on the Friday evening. Now, let's move on, all right? Let's move on to sort of Saturday, Saturday morning, maybe, all right? That Jews go to the synagogue, all right? And obviously, you you know that. We've just, if you've watched the, the previous videos, we've just spoken about, uh, about that. And now, this usually takes place on the Sabbath morning, on Saturday morning, okay? And this is important as it brings the community together to show public worship to God, all right? So, they go... Like Catholics on a Sunday, essentially. Okay, next one. So that's Saturday morning. Let's move on. That service is over. It's time to go home again. All right. So Jews celebrate the remainder of Shabbat at home with their family. All right. That's a big thing. The importance of family. All right. And the type of thing they would do. All right. Is that there are three meals that they that they're eating together. Orthodox Jews. Some of them they don't use electricity. They just sort of focus on spending time with one another. Um. And if you want to speak about sort of the praise that they that they say, obviously they they, they pray with another, and the sort of focus of those prayers was called that is one that focuses on the, the creation of the universe. So it was like a prayer of thanksgiving. So if you want to mention that in your answer, that would be great too. Then obviously it comes to an end. All right, so Shabbat ends with specific practices. All right, so the uh, the one of them. All right, they always remember is the spice box. Okay, that at the end of Shabbat they pass around a spice box, or whatever that obviously smells nice. All right, smells sweet. Um, to remind them of uh, the sweet week ahead following Shabbat. Essentially, we've done, we've been good Jews. However, as a result, we are now we feel re-energized to continue to be good Jews, and also that that God is going to be there with us. Or he's going to be pleased with what we've done, and that that this is a reminder that now we're going to have a, a sweet week ahead. All right. So think about that spice box. All right. Think about sort of the, the smells of of cinnamon, that type of thing. If 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 you're struggling with that a little bit, maybe almost like the smell of, of fresh donuts, all right? That's that kind of smell. It wouldn't be as greasy as that, obviously, all right? But I'm just trying to say about, give an example of cinnamon. Um, the next one, okay, is you could be asked to explain the importance of Shabbat, all right? Now, obviously, it is a vital practice, all right? So the first one is that it's been seen as a gift from God, 
All right, so Shabbat's important, it's a gift from God. And the reason for that is that Shabbat is a day of rest, okay? It's a day of rest. So, um, essentially, it is you don't have to worry about anything else. God has given them a day where they can just focus on spending time with one another and showing love to God, all right? So, the impact that has on the lives of Jews is the fact that they, they spend all their time praying to God and spending time together as a family, all right? And, and re-energizing their relationship with God and, and with one another. Uh, the next one is that, and this is this is one that's going to sort of require uh, revision, really, is that it reminds them of creation and freedom, okay? The fact that God created the world and he made them free, okay? So, um, the the sort of the reasons that sort of how you can see this all right is through the lighting of the two candles all right doing shabbat all right and also the specific praise thanking god for creating the universe for jews okay so it's that's quite a bit of a tough one that is right so you'll have to make sure that you you revise that it's not one of those ones that's going to come naturally all right then um so the impact of that, right, is that if God has sort of created the world for them and that they are, what's called, that they are, that he's ensured their freedom, that obviously they're going to feel pretty good about that, okay? They're going to feel that uh, that God has, has chosen them to be his children, okay? And that um, as a result of that, they feel energized to do his work or to show that love back to him. We're back to their idea of reciprocating love. Um, the next one is that Shabbat is important. This is a way of following God's commandments, okay? And the reason for that, all right, is that obviously there are, there are specific mitzvahs that we've already mentioned that are... Um, Zako and Shamo, all right, which means to remember the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath. So, obviously, of course, Shabbat is a way of keeping God's instructions. The impact of that, obviously, is that God's going to be happy, all right, and that, that it's going to allow you to feel connected with God if you want, because you're following His instructions. And if you want to link that to um, the spice box, or you can think of the chala, the fact that the, God's love for them, or whatever, He's pleased with them doing it, then you can do. Um, the final one is that Shabbat shows the importance of home and family. And for me, this is probably the most important point, all right? And the reason why I say that, right, is that during Shabbat, there's obviously a time where the whole family comes together, all right, where they join together, and, and a lot of the practice takes place at home, okay? It takes place at home. So it reminds them, I, quite, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just a nice idea, really, of the fact that the family come together and their love for each other and love for God. So, therefore, what Jews do is that if that there are, I don't know, so, uh, their parents, okay, so I mean, is that like by elderly parents or widowed uh, Jews, that they would involve them in their, I mean, they would come to come to the home, or then they would be united together, that they um, eat together, the three meals was called in on, on the day of the Sabbath, that they would eat together, that um, also the, the passing around the spice box, all right, there was sort of uh, the idea of, of that they are, they are fortunate to be together and they're fortunate to, to, to be showing love to God together. And as a result, that they, they're being rewarded for it. Okay. So to sort of go through it is it's a gift from God. Cheers, God, you've given us a day off to be together and show love to you. The next one is that it reminds us to be thankful to God. Or it reminds you, sorry. Okay. To be thankful to God for creation and freedom. That's the hardest one. Revise it. Next one is that it's a way of following God's instructions, okay? So you're going to make God happy because it's the two mitzvot, all right, to follow. And the final one is that it shows the importance of home and family. Now, if you get asked the evaluation question about it's too difficult to observe Shabbat, then obviously you're going to draw upon a lot of the, the answer they've said above, okay? So if you're going to say that, if you're going to disagree, okay? If you're going to say about that it's too difficult, to, that it wasn't, too difficult to observe Shabbat. If you're going to do that, then you're going to draw on the answer they've just given, okay? But you're going to be clever about it and you're going to use the right terminology. So you can say that it says it's too difficult. Well, no, it's not too difficult. It's challenging because it lasts a long time. There's certain things you can't do, all right? But it's a way of, sh of, of following God's instructions, which is an imperative for Jews that they have to do it, all right? So you say, you sort of the way to phrase that is that, um, Jews would say that it's not too difficult to observe Shabbat, but it's just that it's, it's challenging, all right? And the reason for this is that whilst the practices are, um, they are I mean, time consuming or whatever, but they still have to do it. This is a, it's a commandment from God, all right? The, the, the two mitzvot. Um, so therefore, that's why that's why Jews do it. They show the dedication to to following sort of God's, God's uh, 
God's instructions, God's commandments. All right, so that's the one sort of paragraph. Uh, the other one is that actually, no, it's not difficult at all because it's a gift from God. They get a day off essentially to show love to God and show love to one another as a family. So that's not difficult at all. Um, the final one is, and I think this is another sort of strong one, is that it's not too difficult as most of it takes place at, at, at the home. All right, so obviously that makes it, if you, if you want, I mean, quite, quite straightforward about the fact that they don't, okay, they would go to the synagogue for, for the service, all right, but a lot of it takes place at the home, that, that as long as they make sure that they are prepared for it, okay, that, that there's no, nothing really holding them back. If you're going to argue why it is too difficult, all right, then you can say about for Jews who are what's called traditional or Orthodox Jews who do not use electricity or technology that, yeah, Shabbat does provide what's called or does, does sort of mean that there's, there's challenges and stops them from observing Shabbat maybe in, in what some Jews would consider to be proper, all right? Um, and the reason for that is that modern day society relies on the use of electricity, technology, all that sort of stuff. And I don't mean that, that like you lot are obsessed with your phones, all right? But I mean, just simple thing of, of preparing food maybe, okay? That, that or just simp simple things like that, okay? That we do, we rely on electricity a, a lot, all right? So therefore some Jews may argue that it's still important to celebrate Shabbat, but it actually, you know what? It is impossible. And that's why I suppose it is, this led to sort of more liberal and reformed Jews taking a more, um, a less strict, okay, a less strict approach. Uh, the other ones uh, that and it sort of links with that point exactly is the fact that there is variation between the different ways that Jews celebrate Shabbat. Suggests that you know maybe it is too difficult. All right, and the reason for that is because so like Shabbat. So let's talk about work, okay? That I'm a teacher. All right, so I do still work Monday to Friday. Okay, but my father, he doesn't, okay? He works, I think it's sort of like he'll have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, day off, okay? Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And it'll be different the week after. And that's the same for lots of people in society. So therefore, keeping keeping the Sabbath holy is a real sort of challenge. And we we don't necessarily have, uh, beggars can't be choosers in today's economic situation. The fact that, that jobs are hard to come by and some Jews may be struggling to find work and that if that means that they can't observe uh, the Sabbath, then should that mean that they should give up that job when it might mean that they can't provide for their family? It's a, it's a tension, okay? There's a tension there and that's your, that's your sort of second paragraph. The other one you could say is that, um, it's sort of that that it would be impossible or whatever that i've sort of linked two points together they really the variation that was called is there with the with jews okay between them suggests that maybe it is too difficult and the fact that in today's society it makes it what's called a challenge as well so i've linked those two together which is actually something that i would advise you doing in your exam okay because i would be arguing my three reasons to say why it isn't too difficult, all right? But the fact that, you know what, it, it's it's challenging, but we've got to do it, it's God's command, that it's not difficult at all because it's a gift, and that it's not too difficult because most of it takes place in the home. And then I'll be combining those two points together, the fact there are variations and, and employment sort of dictates about whether we're able to or not, and that I would be saying about the, the strict sort of ways of celebrating Shabbat are too difficult in a world that relies on electricity and technology. So that concludes the video on Shabbat, its importance and evaluating whether it can be, uh, it's called, it can be celebrated or not. Thanks for watching.